Head of schools, uh, teachers, students, parents and guardians, media representatives, a very good morning to you all. I'm pleased to announce the dates for the reopening of schools for early childhood education, that is ECE to Year 7. This decision has been taken after discussion uh, with the Ministry of Health and Medical Services, UNICEF and WHO. A number of published findings from WHO, UNICEF, the World Bank, and other scientific reports show that COVID-19 may not pose greater risk to children, and when children contract the virus, they have milder symptoms. The classes for ECE to year seven will start on Monday, 10th January, 2022, for face-to-face -face session. As announced earlier, the reopening of schools for years eight to 11 will remain the same, that is Tuesday, 4th January, 2022. Years 12 and 13 will also resume classes on 4th of January. In other words, years eight to 13 will return to school on 4th January, 2022, except ECE to year seven. These students will enter schools for face-to-face -face classes a week later. The staggered approach will be used to prepare students in batches for safe teaching and learning during this pandemic. Teachers will raise awareness on COVID-19 safe school reopening protocol, provide uh, psychosocial support, assist in talking to parents, guardians, and students if the students are not back to school, and also to monitor the implementation of protocol. When ECE to year 13 uh, resume classes, they will continue with the normal uh, learning and teaching in line with the realigned curriculum. Examination dates are same for years 12 and 13. For year 13, examination will be held from 1st to 11th February 2022, and the results are expected to be released on 17th March 2022. For year 12, examination will be held from 7 to 17th February 2022, and results are expected to be released on 6th April 2022. Regarding vaccination, uh, I'm also pleased to say that the vaccination of students between the ages of 12 to 14 years is progressing very well, with 10.4% now fully vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine, considering that the rollout started on 15th November, just a few weeks back. 61.6% .6 of our students between the ages of 15 and 17 are now fully vaccinated. I would like to also thank our students and their parents and guardians for making the right decision to get vaccinated. This decision has given us confidence to believe that our, ch that our students will be safer when they return to schools in January. As you all know, Vaccination is not mandatory for students. However, I'm encouraging uh, parents, guardians of all eligible students to get their children vaccinated for their safety and for the safety of others. While the transmission of the virus is less common through schools, it has been found that transmission occurs more easily through communities. And if a child contracts the virus from the community, it is possible for the child to take it to school and transmit it to other students. So it's the other way around. Not from the school, it goes to the community. In fact, it comes from the community into the schools. I therefore make a humble plea to parents and communities to observe all COVID safe protocols when they gather for celebration over this festive season. Uh, school holidays, uh, as announced earlier, all teachers and students will go on break for two weeks starting from Monday 20th December 2021 until a Monday 3rd January 2022. And I wish to reiterate the last day of reporting uh, to schools for all teachers will be this Friday 17 December 2021 while the first day of reporting to school after the break for all teachers will be Tuesday 4th January 2022 simply because 3rd January is a public holiday. You know, there has been a tradition that teachers re, uh, return to school on a Monday, students come on a Tuesday. But this time round, students and teachers will be reporting uh, to school on the same day, which is 4th of January. 
Uh, during this break, year 12 and 13 students will be given revision ac activities to prepare for the external uh, examination. We all know this is the cyclone uh, period and also uh, festive season for us. So I'm asking the head of schools to take all precautions to secure schools properly, particularly the books and other expensive equipments they have, uh, including water tanks and generators. We've seen in the past, because the schools are not properly secured, uh, such items get damaged and uh, it's a cost uh, to, to replace them. Uh, preparation for safe reopening of schools. Uh, let me reiterate that uh, training of heads of schools and mock drills by the Ministry of Education has given our officials, heads of schools and teachers enough knowledge and skills to manage the safe reopening of schools. The preparation of the schools are going well and officials from the Ministry of uh, Health and Medical Services will visit primary schools from this week to check the arrangements before schools close uh, for holidays uh, this Friday. Just like what they did for secondary uh, schools, so they'll do the same for the primary schools. The preparation of schools has been an intensive exercise, and I thank the heads of school, teachers, management team, parents and guardians, and communities for coming together to help make it possible. Do you realize when the school was closed for six months, uh, obviously, uh, the building needed a lot more care. Uh, the paint, etc., had uh, the building had to be repainted, and uh, and all other uh, cleanli uh, cleanliness had to be observed, so that uh, when our kids return to school, they find the school environment uh, conducive for for learning. Uh, the ministry is arranging for e-transport cards to be ready for top up. As soon as this arrangement is made, we will inform everyone through the Ministry of Education and Government Facebook page. So please watch this space. Ministry's support towards the reopening of schools. Uh, whilst announcing the reopening plans for schools, the Ministry is leaving no stone unturned in supporting the schools to create and maintain a safe environment for students, teachers and ancillary staff. Schools have been given the liberty to use the free education grant to mobilize the resources that will create a safe school environment. With the support of uh, development partners and NGOs, PPE items such as thermal guns, sanitizers, masks, disinfectants, and so forth have been given to school, uh, schools around Fiji. For ECE primary and special schools, PPE items will be sent before Tuesday, 4th January 2022. I also take this opportunity to thank UNICEF, Suva Retailers Association, Adra Fiji, Save the Children Fiji, Fiji Chemicals for their timely support for PPEs. My message to parents and guardians, the education of children is and will always remain our top priority. As schools reopen, I want to assure our parents that we are here to provide any support needed by students to assist them in settling into their studies. We are very mindful that many parents and their families have gone through trying times over the past several months, and we are here to support our students through our teachers, heads of schools, and child protection officers. I also wish to urge parents to send their children to school when schools reopen, so that children's education uh, is taken care of. Please note that at this stage, school uniforms are not mandatory, it's not compulsory. Students may come to school in their outings, or what we call mufti, kids know mufti better than outings, if they do not have appropriate uniform. However, students are expected to come in their appropriate school uniforms when the new school year starts in April 2022. Parents are to ensure that their child's e-transport card is redeemed well before Tuesday, 4th January 2022. Bringing our students back to school is everyone's responsibility, and I urge each and every one to help in whatever way possible to make this happen. I also humbly ask our parents and guardians to exercise 
extreme care and to diligently wash their children as we are in the cyclone season and uh, are approaching the festive season. Finally, on behalf of the Ministry of Education, Heritage and Arts, I wish everyone a blessed and safe Christmas. We can only hope that 2022 will bring better days in our lives. So thank you, God bless, and uh, finally we are ready to take your questions related to reopening of uh, schools. Thank you. Good morning, Minister Fono from the Fiji Sun. Can you just uh, touch on the number of COVID cases we've had in our schools and how safe are our classrooms uh, in anticipation for the return of our ECE to Year 7 students? Uh, COVID cases, uh, so far we had uh, nine COVID cases uh, in schools. Uh, we had, today there is just one active COVID case uh, you can say uh, in schools, because eight have been cleared uh, and only one active case uh, we have uh, as of now. Uh, and it's a clear indication that although we had nine COVID cases, the, the heads of schools and the teachers were very well prepared to handle the situation. And you did not see any major outbreak in a particular school where we had to close that school. Nothing like that happened because as cases were detected, they were isolated and they were treated. And that was our strategy uh, that was developed with the help of uh, Ministry of uh, Health. And Ministry of Health has been very, very helpful whenever the calls were made by teachers. Even if a child was sick, not because of COVID, uh, but the health um, uh, team were there to, to assist. Uh, you know, part of the protocol, uh, it very clearly outlines that when a child is not feeling well uh, and uh, if he or she complains, then what action a teacher must take. And in all schools, teachers have been uh, following that uh, guideline. And after every positive case that uh, was reported, uh, Ministry of Health went back to check whether that protocol was used or not, you know whether they followed that protocol or not. Then what are protocols for students if they are found positive during the exams? Will they be told to isolate and given a supplementary exam? Or? Absolutely. In fact, you've answered the question. That's precisely what we'll do. Ma'am, for year 12 students who want to move to year 13 upon completing the exams in February, with the new school year starting in April, will they be going home and waiting for the schools to open in April? Or? For year, sorry, year? Year 12. So year 12, when it's an external exam, and we all have gone through external exams, right? So when the external, when you sit for an external exam, you need to uh, wait for your final result. Uh, for for um, uh, year 12, the results will be out in March. And once the result is out, uh, the school will open on uh, around April 9th. Uh, so that's when they go back to school. Remember, they've been working extremely hard while uh, the rest of the children are not because of the exams they have to sit. So it's always nice that after the exam they also get a break before they start their new school year or when they return to tertiary classes. Um, the fact that all this effort has been made to uh, open the schools and the fact that we are providing vaccines for our children and looking at uh, the number of students uh, who have gone back to classes, particularly year 12 and 13, and we have just reported around nine cases, and all was taken, uh, all, were, all nine cases were taken care of, and today we are left with just one case. Uh, and, and also based on many other reports, um, there is only one way uh, for the students, uh, for their 
teaching and learning, and that would be through classroom. And this is what even WHO and UNICEF have been saying. So that's what it will be. However, if, if parents uh, do not wish to send their children, then obviously it's homeschooling. And if it's homeschooling, then uh, perhaps they can liaise with the teachers or they can make their own arrangement. Have there been schools in the Rewa Delta which were not COVID compliant? Is the ministry aware of it? In the Rewa Delta? I will ask uh, PS to answer that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, since last week, we've been, um, they've been doing the mock trials and assessing schools. Um, more than 50% of the schools have been compliant. The ones that are not have been given um, instructions and they're currently working to make sure it's compliant. So every school will be compliant and not every school will in the first attempt be compliant. Madam PS, I, ha I have a question. Uh, just in terms of the uh, coverage of the syllabus, uh, we've received uh, some uh, concerns from parents on how uh, the syllabus have not been covered, uh, fully covered, and year 12 students are being told to sit for examination, and if they don't pass, they'll have to repeat. What is the ministry's uh, arrangement on that? I will take you back to last year. Remember last year, schools were closed for three months. When schools reopened, a realigned curriculum was given to students, and the students were then assessed based on the realigned curriculum. It's not uncommon to do that. We did exactly the same this year. This year, because it was a longer break, we took the time to make sure that we aligned the curriculum from, say, uh, 9 to 13 in a way that we did not lo leave any major knowledge gaps. So. We aligned the whole thing together to try our best within the time frame, within the number of weeks that we have to complete, to make sure that there were no major gaps as students progressed. That is the best we can do. We cannot guarantee that every single thing that is in a normal curriculum will be covered. And that's why we call it realigned. Ma'am, what uh, Mayor Reoni from Fiji One, what measures are in place to ensure uh, uh, that you address overcrowding in classrooms and also ventilation? As you know, our years 12 and 13, when they came in, the other classrooms were free, so the setup has been very good. Obviously, with all students coming back, um, social distancing will not necessarily be possible in every class for every student. Um, there are alternatives that teachers will be will be using, um, but the main thing is that classes have to be ventilated. We are pleased to say all you have to do is look at schools in Fiji, and our schools are naturally built for cross ventilation. And schools have been, and that's why we released the free education grant very early. Many schools are buying extra fence and putting extra fence in the classroom. So that works continuing, and one of the things when the Ministry of Health approves schools for, for preparedness is looking at ventilation, of course, and masking. Masking indoors is mandatory. So the most important thing that we've been told by the Ministry of Health Medical Services is masking and um, ventilation. So those two are the most important things.